Ready to finally understand the differences between Addison's and Cushing's diseases? Let's dive in and Corda solve the mystery together. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics, including detailed sections on Addison's and Cushing's disease. Now that you know where to find additional resources, let's go over the key to understanding Addison's and Cushing's diseases. The key is that they're more or less opposite of each other. So really, you only have to learn the function of the adrenal hormones, and then you'll know what happens when they're out of whack. A handy way to remember the hormones that the adrenal glands produce is with three words that hint at the function of these hormones. Those three words are sugar, salt, and sex. The first, sugar, hints at glucocorticoids which is a steroid hormone that's involved in anti-inflammation, immunosuppression, and blood glucose regulation. Second are mineral corticoids. Remember this one with salt, since it refers to aldosterone. This hormone helps control water and sodium reabsorption in the kidneys. And third, sex hormones, androgens, like testosterone and estrogen which control lots of things in the body, but in particular with Addison's and Cushing's diseases, you're going to see changes in physical characteristics. All right, you've got sugar, salt, sex. Now let's go over each disease process, starting with Addison's. It's also known as adrenal insufficiency, and insufficiency means a lack of something. And with Addison's, the adrenal glands don't produce enough of the hormones that regulate blood sugar and fat metabolism, electrolyte balance, and the ability to compensate in fight or flight. It's usually caused by some type of damage to the adrenal glands, whether that be from infection, autoimmune disease, or tumor growth. You can remember that it's Addison's that is too little hormone production because the treatment for Addison's is to add or replace those hormones. Some classic assessment findings will be their skin's bronzed appearance. They may also experience weight loss due to hypoglycemia. There's also dizziness, fatigue, weakness, and dehydration. Other assessment data will show hypotension and tachycardia, as well as electrolyte imbalances like hyperkalemia, hypercalcemia, and hyponatremia. Oftentimes, Symptoms can be subtle or occur over several months, but during times of stress, illness, or injury, the symptoms can be much worse. In fact, an acute exacerbation may actually result in what's called Addisonian crisis. This is where the symptoms appear really suddenly and severely and can lead to life-threatening shock. So for these patients, you may be administering corticosteroids like hydrocortisone or prednisone and fludrocortisone acetate for mineral corticoid replacement. Monitoring vital signs, electrolyte labs, and blood glucose are also a part of therapeutic management due to the hormones that are missing that control those processes in the body. Unlike low hormone production in Addison's disease, with Cushing's disease, there's too much sugar, salt, sex hormones, and that manifests in the symptoms these patients actually experience. And with Cushing's, it's usually caused by an adrenal or pituitary tumor or the overuse or chronic use of corticosteroids. You can remember Cushing's because things are a little bit cushier. They tend to lack muscle mass and have redistribution of fat as well as hyperglycemia because of the influx of glucocorticoid. And that's the sugar part. An overproduction of cortisol leads to increased blood sugar. This causes weight gain and, like I mentioned, redistribution of fat, resulting in some hallmark physical findings like moon face or the formation of a buffalo hump. In regards to the salt component, there's excess mineral corticoid aldosterone. Like we talked about, Aldosterone signals the kidneys to retain sodium in water, which results in hypertension, and symptoms in these Cushing's patients can actually appear like those of heart failure patients. An imbalance of the androgens or sex hormones can actually result in excess hair growth, and it affects the integrity of the skin. 
And that can result in striate or stretch marking on the torso because the skin is so fragile. Removal of the adrenal or pituitary tumor, as well as stopping the use of corticosteroids are forms of treatment for Cushing's disease. Monitoring electrolyte and cardiovascular status is of utmost importance. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com NFN, click the link in the description below, or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.